Hey! Yes? It's time to race the nags. The nags? The nags. What? It's nag racing time, developed by Richard A. Olson and distributed by SoftSource Incorporated in 1992. SoftSource was better known for their retail division, Personal Companion Software, and this is indeed a PCS release here. Even though the packaging is about as exciting as a non-disclosure agreement, I love these guys because they provided a neat physical package to what may have otherwise only been available as a download. And they look all cool and uniform once stacked up on each other, except for these educational ones. Screw them for being different. The game comes on a single floppy disk, which is great if you have a floppy drive. And not so great if you have mashed potatoes. Race the Nags begins with a PC speaker ditty and a strange disembodied horse head. You then get an elegantly simple green menu that lets you enter the names of up to six players that will soon lose their shirts. Then it's on to the off-track betting to place your bet on any single horse. You're graciously provided with $500 to start out with, and you can bet on any horse to either win, place, or show in the race. Only flat races are on offer here, so no steeplechasing or endurance races, just a short sprint from point A to point B. If you've bet on a horse that isn't awful and happens to finish at or above the position you bet on, you win! At least until the next race, because hey, a true gambler doesn't stop until they're bankrupt, especially not in Race the Nags. The payout is determined by the winning position you bet on, as well as the odds based on prior statistics, so taking a gander at the stats board is a good idea if you want to look like you know what you're doing. Otherwise, just take a wild guess and bet on whatever horse has the best name. Of course, that can be pretty difficult when you've got names as great as Tambourine Man, Slip Me Some, Grave Situation, Call Me Later, Out of Tune, and In the Pink. Shame there's no coconut pizza here, but I'm sure you can modify the game with such surefire winners if you're a good enough casino cop. The horse names really are a highlight of the game, and the back of the box boasts over 200 of them being included. The other big draw is, of course, the gambling itself, while the actual equine competition gets placed on the back burner much like real life. The outcomes are rather consistently unexpected, too, with even the most stellar stallions falling flat and the most pathetic ponies taking a surprise win. I always imagine that the horses that trip up and fall over actually just dropped dead. Especially considering the name of the game, because as far as I know, a nag chiefly refers to a horse that is old and worn out. So in that case, we're racing a bunch of old, worn out horses for our own twisted pleasure, and that just makes the whole experience even better. And man, the intro to the game wasn't lying when it billed itself as horribly addictive. For what is essentially a single-screen DOS game, this is incredibly compelling stuff if you've got even a single gambling bone in your body. While it's not as involved as it could be, I mean, you're not betting on multiple horses or investing in the training of them or anything, it is just as involved as it needs to be, and not a bit more. Take any one thing out of this game and it sucks. Conversely, add too much and you'll want to keep adding until you end up with a game like Derby Owners club. I think the developer found a neat sweet spot with Race the Nags and knew precisely when to say enough is enough and call it a day. After all, this came out in 1992-93 and computer hardware was capable of far more at the time, even for independent developers. Now, whether this limited gameplay core was a conscious design decision or whether it was simply a lack of skill or time, I don't know and I don't care, really. The result was a game that does precisely what you expect, thoroughly absorbs you into that one thing, and keeps you betting on just one more race until you either win big or lose big. And both are equally as exciting, knowing that you can simply restart at any time and have another $500 to play with. Race the Nags may be oversimplified and have a bit of a strange name, but I find the execution to be fascinating and another fun example of the minimalist less is more philosophy. And if you enjoyed my mashed potatoes, then you're on the right channel. I've got plenty more potatoes in my fridge, although I'm about to eat them, so never mind. But I do have a lot of videos to watch that are on my channel currently and that are going to be coming in the future. I have new videos every Monday and Friday. You can also follow and interact with me on Twitter and Facebook throughout the week in between videos and whatnot to see what I'm working on. And you can support the show on Patreon if you would like to do some extra stuff that is cool. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and holy crap, it's almost 2015, where are my flying cars? <laughs>